Hello. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> all right, let's welcome everyone. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the season two of O Talakayan. This is CAOT's online interview program uh, where we tackle different topics and issues in OT practice and education. So, how's everybody, Tanya? How are you? You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I'll take two, take two. Ayan, okay <laughs> naman so far. Ayan, kumusta yeah. naman? Kumusta ka, Ma'am Carol? So, ano, kumusta, kumusta ka dyan? Okay naman. Feel na feel ko yung weather ngayon kasi ang tagal nating mainit. So, noong umulan, yan, na-enjoy ko naman siya. <laughs> And so, as you all know, last episode, we had uh, Miss Caroline Fischel with us who talked about tailoring technology-mediated occupations for older adults. And the topic was very timely. As you all know, the current government directives diba, for our older adults and, of course, for those who have clients belonging to the old age population. Right. Correct. Um, and, you know, speaking of... Uh, topics that are timely. Uh, tonight, <laughs> we are yet to discuss another topic that is, or that has taken over the world right now. Um, center of attention all over the world. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? This is the coronavirus or COVID-19. But 
for tonight specifically, we'll be um, talking about the lives that have been affected by this mm-hmm. disease. And of course, as occupational therapists, um, what's our role in, in uh, taking part in caring for these um, individuals who've been diagnosed with COVID-19? So interesting Ayan. topic, diba? Diba? <laughs> And I have the uh, opportunity and the privilege to introduce our overseas or important speakers. <laughs> and I would like to give a time difference. Ito sila, nag-share sa ating Hello, Filipino OTs. Anyway, for our first speaker, we have Miss JN Francisco. Yeah. So Hello. she has been in Yes, hi Miss JN. <laughs> she has been in the United Kingdom since 2004, practicing OT in UK from 2011. She is an alumna of Emilio Aguinaldo College, batch 2003. She is registered under the Health and Care Professions Council in the United Kingdom. Currently, she is employed in Kingston Hospital, NHS Foundation Trust, also in United Kingdom. And her current role is Frailty and Admission Avoidance Therapy Team Lead. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Ms. JN Francisco. Hi, Ms. Mom. Hello. Hello, good yeah. afternoon, Jan. Ay, good evening, Jan. Good afternoon, okay. Jan. <laughs> Ayan, we're our next speaker. Ayan. So, our next speaker has been in the United Kingdom for three years already. He is an alumnus of University of Santo Tomas. And currently, he is affiliated with Chalk Hill Primary Care Center, Brent Children's Occupational Therapy Team, London Northwest University Healthcare NHS Trust. He has been certified in various fields such as COOP London, Intermediate and Basic Wheelchair Services Provision by the WHO, Move Kinetic Taping, and National Institutes of Health in the USA. Let's all welcome Mr. Luis Porpora. Hi. Uh, Hi, Luis. Hello. How's everyone? <laughs> we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're on the same. Yeah. We're on the same time, Luis. Yeah, same time. One. Of course, two of our speakers are came all the way from the United Kingdom. And for our last speaker who will be joining with us tonight is <clears throat> from the U.S. Well, she has been working as an OT in the United States for three months, and she finished her M.S. in OT at the Dominican College. She currently is affiliated with Garden Care Rehabilitation Center in East Orange, New Jersey, and in Columbus Specialty Long-Term Acute Care Hospital in Newark, New Jersey. Let's all welcome Rigel Maligaya. Hi, Rigel. Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 <laughs> okay, so there you have it, our three wonderful speakers who will be sharing, you know, one of the most, uh, kumbaga, Um, tinatanong na topics kasi kung ano ba talaga ginagawa ng OT in this pandemic in in COVID uh, you know in COVID-19 clients that we have yeah. right so maybe maybe before we get into the nitty gritty diba um, kung sahin natin yung speakers natin because this is such a unique uh, time we have speakers from different time zones so for um, <laughs> for those who are watching here in the Philippines good evening To our speakers, good afternoon and good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, maybe our speakers can tell us. A, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself first. Maybe your current uh, practice, where you work right now. How are you right now? Uh, maybe we can start with Louis. Yeah. Um. Good evening there, and good afternoon, <laughs> all the way from here, um, the UK. So, um. I'm Luis, and um, currently I'm working as a children's occupational therapist here in um, in the London Borough of Brent. Um, so far, uh, so good. We're getting there <laughs> as compared um, when the pandemic um, has struck the nation um, this February and March. It was um, very awful and dreadful, um, not only for us, but also for the National Health Service in which we are working for. Uh, but um, I think um, the cases are receding, are subsiding. Um, hopefully, um, things would get better, and at least um, you know you would be able to contain this virus. Yeah. Thank you, Luis. 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 Thank
hope to hear from you, please. Yeah. Maybe si JN, kasi kapitbahay mo lang si JN. <laughs> <laughs> ano, uh, Jan na lang, Jan. 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 Oh, kasi, Jan. It, 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 no, it's a bit awkward kasi yung spelling ng name ko. Kasi in the Philippines, I'm being called Jaen. But yeah. then here, they cannot pronounce the Jaen, so for short, it's Jan. So I got so used of being called Jan. 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 Oh. So, um, yes, yeah, so far, as what Luis said a while ago, um, the cases have been um, declining already. Um, actually, I looked into the worldometer um, last night, and because uh, for the past few weeks, I haven't been checking it. But then last night, hmm, naging curious din ako kasi it's one of the questions that you may and that you're gonna be asking. So, yeah, it is be, it has been declining, but there's still variability in terms of um, um, new cases and death. But yeah, we're looking forward on the brighter side of things. Now things are gonna get settled. Um, as of at the moment here in UK, it's summer. So, sabi nila 20 degrees daw, but then it's still a bit cold-ish. Yeah. Um, so, chilly. yeah. It's a, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit chilly, yeah. But then, um, yeah, um, everything's, every, everything, every, I think for me personally, I'm quite optimistic with what I have been um, experiencing sa ngayon. Especially mm-hmm. that the government just initiated a mandatory wearing of masks yeah. just yesterday. Mm-hmm. So it's official mm-hmm. yesterday that everyone should be wearing masks <laughs> if they are in um, enclosed areas like in the transport or going to the shops. But then here kasi we have the liberty to be walking around um, without mask on as long as mm-hmm. you are quite responsible um, um, to maintain social distancing and walang walang ECQ walang walang anything na like that so i think the government is just relying on the conscientious um, responsibility ng mga ng mga brit ng mga britens for that so hopefully hopefully everything will be um, will be okay and then yeah we're going we're looking to the brighter side Let's just see what happens in winter. <laughs> winter is coming. <laughs> yes, winter is coming. Um, likely September. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Few more weeks of sun. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah, Hi, everybody. Um, where I'm at, well, as you all know, number one in the U.S., when it comes to COVID cases, but I can only speak for my state specifically. Um, in the um, eastern side, sa New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, yung, yung tri-state area na yun, um, the cases have been declining, although during the start of the virus, um, it was around March, um, yung spike talaga ng cases as in sobra. Todo. Yeah. So um, the capacity have been um, lahat full. And um, thankfully now, as of July, uh, in our state specifically here in New Jersey, uh, nag, nag, nag de- decrease na yung number of cases, uh, especially um, sa long-term care facilities kasi sila primarily yung mga affected, yung mga geriatric population natin. And then um, the governor relies on the statistics so um, we're, we actually have reopening phases. So we, in our state, we're on stage three. So binubuksan na nila yung malls again. Um, the restaurants were only allowed to do outdoor dining. And mm-hmm. um, sa, sa facility namin where I work at, we're still required to do masks. Uh, we're still required to do the standard precautions just to be safe for the safety of our patients and also um, mandatory ang pag-wear ng mask dito. So pag bibili ka sa, sa grocery or anything, it's mandatory since March. That's it for me. Right. So, ang galing, no? um, even though we are in different places, somehow we get to see that there are protocols or certain systems in place that are also similar 
And I think number one priority, of course, the safety of everybody. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of us are really positive towards this, um, even though pandemic talaga tayo ngayon, but I guess we're still there, we're still hoping, and we're still um, looking forward to the brighter side of things. So that's mm-hmm. nice to know. Um, our speakers now, um, for our participants watching, um, ang areas nila different, right? So meron tayong nasa hospital setting, practicing in geriatric, and then we also have uh, a pediatric practitioner. So it's nice to know also um, what would be the role of OTs in your current workplaces? I know it's going to be a little bit different, but can you tell us about um, what you experience now in the workplace? We'll start. <laughs> Maybe you can see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so basically, um, where I work, um, yung, we're, we're in an acute inpatient hospital in Kingston. Um, so yung, yung base ko talaga, I work in the emergency department because of the frailty and admission avoidance team. Um, but during the time of the pandemic, because there's no, there's not much uh, patients that are medically fit for therapists to see. We've been redeployed sa inpatient, um, inpatient wards. So in there, uh, we we work collaboratively with um, the MDT, especially sa, with a physiotherapist, because we've been. Um, in implement nung physio and um, occupational therapist yung integrated integrated team service. So what physios are doing, we are also doing. So and vice versa. So in that in in that situation, more of the patients that come to us are not just elderly uh, elderly patients, but a variety of um, different age groups. And you'll be quite surprised na meron ding a younger age, like 40s, around their 40s, which have been affected by the um, by the COVID. Um, so during that period, because of the integration, um, we've also been asked to help out in the ITU together with the physiotherapist. So in there, um, although kasi dito sa, dito sa amin sa Kingston, we don't have affiliation um, we don't have a rotation within the um, intensive therapy unit. But then during at that time, we got involved in order to help the team. Kasi talagang yung staffing level, very low. Tapos we are also looking into um, yung welfare din ng each other. So that kasi you, you are on full PPE the whole day. So... Um, yun nga, looking after each other's welfare and also the priority is to provide yung care sa, sa mga pasyente. So the patients itself um, na, na kinikita namin, that's what I said a while ago, they are of different, um, para, uh, different age groups. So different din ang approach sa kanila kasi it depends, kasi you have, it has to be person-centered. Din sa kanila. What is the most important for them to be able to do right now? Yun yung ano. So do do nagfocus yung goals as as therapist. So so with us usual OT process, we conduct initial assessment. We gather premorbid and collateral histories, and then also we've been liaising with their families, and then. Check um, and then yung um, therapy intervention sa kanila within the within the ward. So, but mainly it's more of like um, because referring back before COVID, we kind of like feel that as therapists, as OTs in the acute setting, we be, we took up like the role of become discharge discharge planners, helping out the patient just to get out of the hospital. And but then during this pandemic, we evolved and we we become more involved with the actual rehabilitation of the patient, which is more mm-hmm. fulfilling for us because that is really our role. 
promoting their independence ika nga so um so that that made a big difference a big impact dun sa moral ng occupational therapist um especially um in Kingston Hospital so yeah that's that's for me for now okay hi louis uh is it the same for you cuz you're also in mm. yeah it's quite different um may pinili pa ako ng PowerPoint. Okay lang ba i-present ko yung pictures? Sure. Kasi um, it's very odd and unusual for a children's therapist to work in the ITU ward, <laughs> especially na wala kami experience working in the ad as like what John um told earlier na they've got experiences working in the ITU ward whereas compared with us um mm-hmm. hindi namin alam gagawin namin, literally zero. So mm-hmm. um Um, yeah, para magka-idea din yung viewers natin, di ba? On well, how yeah. do you really do it in the actual practice in the hospital? Okay, so, you um, may share it now. Um, share. Okay. Alright. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Okay. So, um... When was that? Um, that was March. So that was pre-COVID. So as a children children's therapist, um, we're still doing school visits. Um, because the um, role of trabaho as a children's occupational therapist is to see children from four to eighteen years old in different um primary, secondary, mainstream schools in this borough and also colleges. But when COVID struck, um. Hindi ay makadibuta na we receive an email from the HR department saying that majority of the children's therapy team would be redeployed. And then mm-hmm. we were asked um, if we would be redeployed in the admin staff or uh, pagiging porter or yung in the bereavement unit or in the mortuary or in the ITU. So I've chosen pharmacy as, as a pharmacy runner or, and also as an admin. And then two days after, we receive an email that we would be redeployed in the ITU ward, and it was like, "Bakit?" Because <laughs> um, of all the places na iiwasan namin, it would be the ITU because we don't have any knowledge or the expertise um, um, providing our services in the ITU ward because we are children's therapists. But good thing, um, the staff at IT Ward was really um, dynamic. They were really open and they were really flexible, and um, they taught us um, on the ABCs of how to manage patients in the IT Ward. So, which leads to this first slide. Now, we were deployed in this hospital. It's called um, Norfolk Port and St. Mark Hospital. So, technically, it's one of the ground zero hospitals here in London, and mm-hmm. Basically, um, that was this February. Um, majority of the beds were were used, and it has been um, fully uh, utilized because of the surge of the number of COVID cases um, in this area. And on this slide, um, dito talaga nag work sa um, center. So this is our hub, the Chocolate Primary Care Center. And then on the right um, are just two schools, two of the schools that I usually work with. And when we received the email, we got a sudden shift, a massive and um, sudden shift. Because we didn't know what we were going to do and what we need to do. So on our first two days of training, we were taught how to properly don and dust PPEs. And um, alam lang, ang alam lang namin sa PPEs is you know, gloves and then mask and that's it. But we didn't know that we've got to put on also yung hood, yung color white, and ulo, nasa ulo ko. And then also yung um, surgical apron, and then gloves, and then yung Wellington boots, and such. So the first two days of training, we were taught how to um, put on and take off PPEs. And then um, our role as an OT is to do pruning and depruning. So basically, um, we were... Um, Parang ika nga, parang nilagay kami sa layer of the wolves and den of the lions. Kasi andyan yung main battlefield. 
Um, but good thing, during the training, we were taught how to do um, prone and de-proning. So for our viewers, when we say prone and de-proning, technically, um, pinoposition yung patient from supine to prone and vice versa every 16 hours. Because it is one of the gold standards in making sure that the posture and the position of the patient would be in neutral position even though the patient is lying on the bed. So as an occupational therapist, we thought as well that sleeping is also one of their occupations. And we've got to make sure that their postural management and their posture itself would be, um, would be optimal, even though they're just recuperating and recovering. So on the left side, yun yung ICU ward ng Northwood Park. And then on the right, upper right side, um, technically it was the main battlefield. And we've got to be very precautious. On, on what we need to do and what we will actually be doing to our patients. And then on the bottom right, it's care of BBC. Um, it's actually one of our patients um, who was admitted. And technically, um, that one is intubated and mechanically ventilated. Um, so as an OT, working with um, other disciplines, such as physiotherapists, anesthetists, healthcare assistants, nurses, and other doctors, we need to make sure that the patient would be able to recuperate and recover as optimally as the patient um, can. And then some of the pictures, so again, um, I was wearing the hood. And then yung katabiko, she is a speech and language therapist. And she also didn't expect that she would be redeployed in the ICU ward. Uh, but she was actually a pharmacy runner, so basically, ang role niya is to um, deliver um, different medications from the main pharmacy into the ITU um, ward. And then, this were us. So, when we were having a break, so, yung mga kasama ka dito, they were dentists. So, they didn't also expect na ma-redeploy ka sila. Kasi, to tell you honestly, the NHS was literally struggling um, that was March, February or March, and literally um, hospital staff was really outnumbered. That's the reason why they've got to um, ask some of the staff to be redeployed in the hospital, you know, to offer support and um, offer help to those um, staff who are in the hospital. And then, misa yung iba nakakatulog na kasi adera-deracho kasi yung, um, yung trabaho. So technically, when we were in the ITU ward, we were on the 11-hour rota. So minsan sa umaga, we would be going to the hospital from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then kapag nasa night rota kami, we would be starting from 9 in the evening until 8 in the morning. And then nung, nung April, dahil grabe yung kaso ng COVID, uh, may at pumapasok kami dun sa ITU. So basically, um, kailangan ang, ang aming um, presence of mind ay top notch or top quality ika nga. And um, maganda ng NHS is um, yung PPEs namin uh, would only be on our body for a maximum of 2 to 3 hours and nilalabas kami to have a break. For example, 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour and then babalik kami ulit to do our proning and deep proning. So, minsan during the uh, uh, night shift, hindi yan maiiwasan na uh, makatulog, dahil maiiwasan na mapagod kasi nga, as a children's therapist, hindi kami sanay na mat magtrabaho ng gabi. Hindi kami uh, binulat na maging ganun. Pero dahil sa, sa call of duty, as a healthcare professional, um, we need to help. We need to support those hospital staff who are literally outnumbered, who are really sacrificing their lives in order to make the lives of the patient as optimally um, as, 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 as they can. And as an occupational therapist, again, a pinaka role is to make them as, as um, independent as they can once they get discharged. And then also for them to recover, to recuperate as optimal as they can. So I think the, uh, my two sets of words here, um, as a children's occupational therapist who has been redeployed in the IT ward, despite we don't have any knowledge, um, working with the IT staff, at least um, we became open, we became flexible, we have gained knowledge on how to, um, how to do proper handling, or manual handling, proper positioning, proper pruning, deep pruning, and to work with different professionals um, who are in the IT ward. Yeah, that's it. Great. Ayan. So, Rish, uh, 
yun, given yung two, sam- two examples from our previous speakers, ayan, do you also do face-to-face? And how was it? Okay, so for me, um, it's relatively the same as the two other therapists from um, uh, with their treatment approach. However, um, share ko lang real quick. So I just graduated and as soon as I started working sa COVID unit again. So in my facility, um, it was, I know, uh, it was a little scary at first, but actually um, we, when we started, like I mentioned, um, we had two, two floors of all COVID units. And of course, um, we only have two, two therapists, OTs, and then uh, two PTs to, to see all the patients in all the floors. We're kind of short staffed because um, other my other co-therapists are getting sick, so they had to do the quarantine. So, um, yung manpower namin was very limited, and then our caseload was because we usually see like 10, 10, 8 to ten patients a day. So during that time, it was like ten to fifteen a day, and um, super ano kami uh, interdisciplinary, kumbaga collaborative kami. So usually our resident physiatrist usually refers if, okay, is this good for therapy? And then i-eval na namin and everything. But um, during, this, during the peak of the virus, um, we did more on positioning. We did more on um, light hygiene and grooming tasks. Pero kasi yung the mere na uh, bed mobility activities, it was very hard enough for the patient. So we can't really do much. The usual thing that we do, like we do bedside ADLs, we do like exercises, we do like endurance and balance training. Wala, lahat yun, hindi, siya, hindi namin siya magawa. Because yung, kumbaga, yung ipaparoll mo lang siya sa side or like yung maglag rolling lang kami or like magmove lang to edge of bed, it was too much for the patient. So uh, kami, we work collaboratively with the physical therapist. So more on positioning na lang kami. Tapos kapag unstable, especially yung intimate uh, patients who are intubated, we usually just do really positioning with them or passive range para lang ma-maintain yung, kumbaga, yung function nila. But majority of them, especially dun sa ventilator unit namin, very uh, non-responsive. So more on passive mm. treatment lang yung ginagawa namin. But we still follow the OT process, evaluate, we plan the goals. But then um, we had to be flexible during that time. Na talagang everybody needed therapy. Everybody needed to, you know, at least have some strength to at least like hold their cup, to at least mm. feed themselves, you know. So yeah, because I, I work in a long-term care. So um, the people who used to be like just walk around the facility, they're all bedridden. And we all had to do positioning with them. So, yeah. Um, let me just add into that, no? Yung sa sinabi ni Luis kanina, um, na Northwick Park, yes, Northwick Park is the high, is, para siya niya siya yung epicenter ng epidemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during that time. Kasi Luis, you, you might have worked with my brother kasi he works in ITU as a nurse. Pero obviously, oh, really? you wouldn't, okay. you wouldn't see each other because of that yeah. East. <laughs> yeah, so so I know what happened in Northwick Park um, because I have an experience myself. I had a I had a cousin who has been severely affected by COVID, and he was also brought in um Northwick Park ITU yeah. hospital. But he's he's recovered now. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, but really, um, I think colla- collating all yung mga sinabi natin na it became integration, di ba? Yeah. Kumbaga, naging you're not just you're not just an OT. Naging mm-hmm. kumbaga na upskill tayo through that experience because we have to you have to be innovative pagdating yeah. sa practice and very and it's it's such a blessing in disguise kasi kumbaga parang before I don't know I'm just speaking of um sa Kingston there there's a team of physiotherapists. Mm-hmm. They are physiotherapists. We are occupational therapists. They are the nurses. They are the doctors. They are the speech and language therapists. But then during that period, it's like everybody are just pitching in kung ano yung pwede nilang magawa in order just to help the patient, in order yeah. just to help yeah. each other ease up yeah. the workload. Because yeah. we do, we all, it's more of like, yeah, we're just looking after each other for us to be able to mm-hmm. look after mm-hmm. our yeah. patients at the time. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's 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 empowering. It's yeah. tiring at the time. It's it overwhelming. There's loads of fears. There's loads of I don't know what mm-hmm. to do, but tell mm-hmm. me what you want me to do and I'll gonna do, we'll it. do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Grabe. Nakakatawa yung speakers natin ngayon. What? Parang, alam mo yung, parang magkakasama sila. I mean, same experience, <laughs> di ba? Well, yeah. truly, based from your words, we can really say that the OT profession that you have experienced, parang nag-level up kayo <laughs> during yeah. this time of pandemic. No? That's, mm-hmm. good. Oh, that's good to know. And, ayun. So, I also have this question in mind. Do you actually follow a fixed protocol when you manage or handle a COVID patient? Yeah. And I mean, Rish, you can, Rish, you okay, can answer. Um, for my facility specifically, um, uh, the protocol is we treat everybody as COVID patients. So we use the standard precautions. So we wear a suit all day. We wear a mask all day. We change glove from one patient to another. We have to disinfect whatever equipment we use for, for the patient. Every So I have gloves and then I have like... Um, disinfecting wipes all over so I had to from one patient to another because um we used to do group group treatment for Medicare patients but of course now hindi na so ano siya um kumaga concurrent treatment siya before COVID but now we have to do room to room um, uh, room to room okay yeah mm-mm. so inpatient kasi siya so kailangan uh bago ka pumasok hand washing PPE mo. So, what I usually do kung lahat nasa second floor, lahat ng nasa second floor, iti-treat ko muna. Para, kumbaga yung transmission, limited. Tapos, meron akong separate PPE for each floor. Para hindi, para just for the safety of the patients. And then, um, yeah, that's it for me for the COVID protocol. And then, every every week pala is, um, chine-check namin sino na yung, uh, sino yung positive pa rin, sino pa rin, sino yung negative na. So, parang in rearrange namin yung treatment and everything. Para i-up namin yung goal if kaya na ba niya for endurance or if positive pa rin siya, ito lang yung magiging goal namin for the day. Yan lang. Okay. And how about you, Miss Jan? What are you, usually the common managements that you do for COVID patients? So far, yung sa nakita niya na. Mm-hmm. I mean, ano yung usual OT managements so, that for them? Kasi, um, if, he, if, if going back to during the height of the pandemic, kumbaga, ang management talaga nun is like early intervention, more of, um, more of like what, what Louis said, yung sa ITU, yung proning, deproning, positioning, manual handling, and things like that. But then, di- different areas kasi pag nasa acute setting. So, pag nasa acute ka, you may be in the intensive care, you may be in the inpatient rehab, or in my case, I may be in the front door, like the emergency services. So maybe I'll just focus on um, dun sa um, inpatient rehab because dun yung generic pop. Kasi um, Luis has explained yeah. more of what OT did in the ITU. So I'll focus more on what we're doing on the in acute inpatient um, um, area. So the setting was divided into three. We have the red, which is the positive COVID patients, and then the amber, which is they are they could be negative but pre- but presenting COVID symptoms. Kasi minsan kahit na test sila na swab test sila it comes out as negative. But because there are underlying symptoms, they are still being considered as within that borderline. So sila yung nasa amber. Mm-hmm. Or if they're still waiting for um, swab results, but then they have active symptoms, nandun sila. And then also, we have the green um, areas, which is sila na yung COVID negative and walang active symptoms. Um, so, as a protocol, you have to understand where are the locations of your patients in order for you to be able to um, equip yourself with adequate PPEs. Mm-hmm. Kasi um, sa pag highly active yung pasyente, 
then you have to be wearing a more rigid type of PPEs, which is the hazmat, the goggles, um, the face shield, um, the um, FPP3 masks, and the the whole astronaut figure kind of image. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then on the amber area, you have to um, medyo, medyo nakakahinga na. So you can you can wear mask, um, FFFPP3 um, masks pa rin, pero hindi na siya hazmat. So you can wear like yung plastic um, plastic aprons. Um, and then, but sa green areas, although they are considered as um, clean, but then you still have to make precautions. Like you still have to wear your um, goggles, your mask, and then your gloves and your apron. And then the, the protocol is still the same. One PPE per one patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we're quite fortunate that NHS is quite um, a good provider when it comes yeah. to PPE. Yeah. yeah. Um, nakikita ko before na sa other, hosp the other the other parts of the world na they are improvising their PPEs and stuff, but within the NHS, although sinasabi nila that there were shortages, but actually, mm -hmm. if you are in the ward, hindi mo nararamdaman yun because there, there's overflowing supplies. And, kumbaga parang, use as much as you need basis. Yeah. Um, so, at the moment, um, same being very vigilant in terms of following the guidelines, making sure na um, you you know the patient first, and then although although at the moment, like for example, sa emergency services na mga pumapasok na patient, even if they come in with a fall, not even any symptoms of COVID, you still have to wear the goggles, the mask, apron, and gloves every time there's patient contact. Yun pa rin yung guidelines dito. And yeah, um, disinfecting, disinfecting all the areas or track down the areas that you that the patient has accessed. Kasi like we do stairs assessment with them as well. So mm -hmm. when we do that, we make sure we bring um, disinfectant, disinfectant wipes. So pagkatapos ni patient, we'll wipe them all down and lahat ng equipment na ginagamit nila. But then the process of our OT intervention is still the same. We there's no there's no difference sa COVID and non-COVID patients. So the way we treat them, um, the way we treat them like intervention, like rehab, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that's so yeah, I'm going to walk with the it's the same attitude. I'm so. oh, sorry. <laughs> go, go. All right. Am I on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Philippines internet. Okay. Um, I you know. <laughs> For like what I said, but what I'm getting is, of course, the role of OT, um, it's somehow still similar. Um, merong mga additional, maraming additional lang, you know, extra precaution, um, some changes in yung mga um, tasks and roles and responsibilities, but the OT management is the same. But I can imagine, siguro, because of um, this is a different diagnosis and um, we're talking about um, different kinds of severity than the symptoms and clients, um, would the goals be different? So, yung prioritization ba ng goals na iiba? Especially uh, before the clients get discharged. Is it different? Is it the same? What's it like for you in your experience? Yes. Um, should I go first? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. So, yes, there is, there is a mass. Uh, there is a big difference in terms of like, even even your even your approach sa patient is different. Because, mm -hmm. um, like for example, 
give an example, for example, uh, like patient elderly came with a fall compared to an elderly patient that came from recovering in a respiratory ward from ITU. So, ibang-iba yung approach. Ibang-ibang um, iba yung approach mo. Kasi we also have to consider especially yung um, energy conservation, yung ability to, ability to engage in mm-hmm. functional tasks. And even only, even just their... Um, ability to sit on the edge of the bed is you would really mm. uh, it, it is such a it is such a big impact not just elderly kasi makikita mo kahit yung mga young younger younger um younger age na uh, mga affected patients kumbaga yung kanilang ano fatigue tolerance yung kanilang um strength is really poor and weak on top of their um on top of their um, shortness of breath. Um, so you would really tailor how you manage them in terms of what they're able to do at that time. Um, like, for example, even just, I think at the time, most of nagagawa namin dun sa mga, COVID, sa mga COVID-affected patients is to just be able to sit them on the edge of the bed and have them to transfer to a chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tapos for them to be able to toler- to to have their seating tolerance because that's one of the kumaga parang yun yung first step for them to be able um to yeah. engage on more functional activities and also mm-hmm. to encourage their alert le- alertness. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the goals that we have to we we are setting up with the patient na yung yung seating tolerance nila and then once we see na they are showing um, progress or their tolerance have been increasing, then that's we're gonna um, um, gradually um, increase their goals into managing to walk at least, to mobilize at least um, five meters or at least access the toilet and then be able to sit and stand from the toilet. Yun, yun yung mga basic, basic, functional, uh, mga parang basic needs na essential na pinoprovide namin sa kanila. And even just the tolerance of like feeding themselves. Kasi you would really see how weak they are. Kasi even their hands were shaking. Yung coordination mm-hmm. from from hand, yung mm-hmm. hand to mouth movement nila is talaga ano. And then, and then because they're trying as much as they can to make that effort, nagtitrigger yung shortness of breath. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, as what as as what Carol said a while ago, it depends. It's really tailored with um, the severity of the of their illness, and it's very per- person centered. Because even if they are young, but they are more severely affected compared to an elderly uh, patient that is mildly affected so it's really different so it's just a matter of like just assessing assessing it as uh, treating them as what they're able to do and manage it that way oh, okay that's insight that's very insightful no and Rachel or Luis you like to add some to what Jan said yeah, um, I have to agree with Jan with the treatment. So it's very client-centered. It depends on the functional current functional level of the patient. But of course, um, ideally, we want to get the most out of every patient as to what this what they can do. But of course, at the same time, you never want to overdo therapy with them. So uh, personally, I just go with whatever the patient can withstand during the treatment. And of course, I provide frequent rest breaks as much as possible. And then since most of them can only endure so much, so I usually do like, like I mentioned earlier, a simple rolling over or a simple like um, edge of bed, supine supine to sit, edge of bed activities. And then um, because hindi natin na-realize yung supine to sit or edge of bed, that alone for a COVID patient is too much already. It would give yeah. them immediate immediate shortness of breath and they would feel lightheaded. So, kasi lagi silang nakahiga. So, pagpapaupuin mo sila, 
syempre uncomfortable yung feeling short of breath. So, babalik na lang ulit kami sa bed. So, talagang you really have to be patient with them when it comes to your treatment. And um, i-add ko lang, yung majority ng treatment that I provided was focused more on breathing exercises because that's my, that's the mostly the the um, deficit among my patients. Um, so, we do pursed lip breathing while seated at edge of bed. And if kaya, static or dynamic sitting balance, um, bed mobility, and if I see na improve siya, we, we're gonna practice on transfers. Yun oh. talaga. Basics talaga. <laughs> Basic, pero malaki yung yeah. impact sa patient. Mm-hmm. No? Yep. Alright. Wow. So, uh, Luis, for example, how fast is the patient turn out, you know, in terms of discharge? Ano ba? Do they, do they stay in the hospital that long? Or do you have mm-hmm. encountered patients na ang bilis lang, like, for example, after three days of discharge? How fast? Para lang magka uh, Okay. So, sa I, because um, I was working in the ITU um, ward. So, technically, it, it, it varies. It varies. It, it's patient-dependent. Especially, um, dun sa mga pasyente na hawakan namin in the ITU ward, they were just literally in lie on the bed. So, um, it was like minimum of 10 days. 12 days okay. in the IT ward and we've had patients who were just in the IT ward for as long as 40 45 days oh, wow. it really depends wow. it really depends on the prognosis it really also depends on the underlying medical conditions um, of the patient as well and also on the age, with the age as well and other pre-existing factors that the patient has got before he or she has got admitted to IT ward okay. so it, 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 it really it really depends um but again, um, once we see the patient recover and recuperate, as what Rochelle and John told earlier, parang nabunutan kami ng tinik. Parang nakahinga na kami ng maluwa. Kasi gising na yung pasyente, dilat na yung mata. Simple yung pagdilat na mata nila. Simple yung paghinga lang nila. Simple yung they're not already depending on the mechanical ventilator on the machine. Yeah. For us, therapists, parang nagawa na namin role namin. IT ward. And then we would now be uh, passing the baton now to like Rochelle or to John who are now in the inpatient rehab for them to uh, fully recover and recover. Kasi parang, oh, parang thank God. Parang nalagpas na nila yung, yung, yung dingit na kamatay. Ika nga, they're out of the woods already. So, yeah. going back with your question, it really depends. Okay. So I think, well, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting to know, no? Yung pagdilat lang ng no? mata. Well, Yun naman tayo talaga yung goal natin na maging, alam mo yun, maging awake tsaka alert yung ating clients, right? So I think, Carol, you have an interesting question for our um, guest yeah. speakers. Oo, kasi ang dami nilang na-share sa atin. Yeah. And a lot of interesting inter- in- interesting things um, na na-share nila. Uh, I particularly like hearing na Parang ano eh, parang may stages, di ba? At one point, you're, you're, you really uh, want survival. Yun lang muna, mag-survive si patient. And then later on, you progress, okay, independent, ganyan, di ba? Functional, and then independent si patient. Um, and our guest OTs now have um, experienced so much being in the battlefield, kumbaga. So I want to know what's your most unforgettable experience um, especially okay. now that you're providing services to these clients. Unforgettable, unforgettable experience. Yes, unforgettable. <laughs> um, most memorable. <laughs> most memorable, yeah. I think your most memorable experience fa- para sa akin. And something that I am reflecting on um, is I have this one patient na, um, yeah, he had, um, he had the fall kasi he had COVID. He wasn't sent to, I, to, he wasn't sent to the intensive therapy unit, but he stayed on a respiratory ward. But then, so, kumbaga para sa akin, ah, hindi naman siya na ITU. Uh, he will be fine and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, upon seeing the patient in bed, he was talking to me. Um, par- he was talking to me. Okay, naman yung conversation namin. Although, yeah, I can see na um, he is still on um, nasal cannula for oxygen of two liters. So, 
kumbaga parang ako, I'm quite optimistic na he will do better. So I sat him on the edge of the bed and then I checked his um um I I've, I've checked his um obs first okay naman siya and everything and then I sat him on the edge of the bed this time a little bit more um puffed kumbaga mas medyo nag ano siya So but then okay pa rin, pa rin naman yung obs so sabi ko okay do you want to sit out in the chair and then agreeable naman si patient so the moment we, because once he stood up, I had to check his obs again. And then, nung naka-stand up na siya, there is some drop dun sa blood pressure niya. Tapos yung oxygen saturation niya nag-drop. Tapos yung heart rate niya nag-spike up. Tapos, yeah. I am, I'm just myself, so I'm quite tiny. Maliit lang ako. <laughs> so, kumbaga, and... And dun sa situation niya, he kind of like started to step towards the chair. So, kumbaga, ang closest position is paupuin ko siya. So, we ma- he managed to do that. But then, nung umupo siya, chinek ko ulit yung odds niya and everything is just like, um, just gone out of place. Yung heart rate niya, ang taas. Tapos nakikita mo talaga siya na he's really breathless. So, tinaas ko yung oxygen to 4 liters pero breathless pa rin siya. So, I need help. So, I press the I press the emergency button. Actually, yung yung button na pinres ko is to call for cardiac arrest. So, everybody came to the ward to help me out. It's not a cardiac arrest but it's an emergency situation. And so, dumating naman yung MDP. They've helped me get him back into bed, and everything. And then he settled. He he his obs became settled, and okay naman siya. So at that time, kumbaga parang okay, I can do this. I've been doing this, blah 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 blah. Kumbaga parang emergency reaction. But having left and reflecting back to it, dun dun sa situation, parang it just struck me na ang taas-taas ng heart rate niya at that time. Paano kung nag-peri arrest siya? What could I, what what could what could I have done? Ganun. Or what could I have done better para hindi mapunta dun sa sitwasyon na yon. So, I think yung that that struck me most na you don't you cannot be complacent when dealing with um COVID patients. Mm-hmm. Especially, you have to be vigilant in monitoring their OBS kasi yun yung mga initial, ano mo eh, initial um, informations mo kung ano ba talaga yung, maga, yung makakaya at magagawa. And also, in terms of what ne- what's your next step kung mag-deteriorate. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so kumbaga ngayon... Uh, Ngayon, kumbaga, I'm still looking into how how could I what could I have done better para mm-hmm. para para mag kung kung sakaling ganito yung ginawa ko would it be better na hindi umabot sa ganun yung patient or if I have someone with me during that time so there's a lot of cause there's a lot of different different things that I could have done which is having a second person with me um, and also, instead of pinush ko pa siya na umupo dun sa chair, sana I could have made him go back to bed para hindi na siya na, nahirapan. Kasi hmm. yung sight ng pasyente mo, na, na yung, yung eyes niya looking at hmm. you, nagiglare, tapos mm-hmm. hirap na hirap talaga siya sa paghinga, tapos kahit inangat mo na yung oxygen, parang walang nagbabago so he looks mm-hmm. helpless in my sight and mm-hmm. yeah i i that's one of my unforgettable experience for that i can imagine it being a it scares scary me <laughs> oh yeah oh okay. yeah. <laughs> suddenly shift bigla eh wow oh. unforgettable yeah. thank you for sharing that experience um Siguro si Luis or si Riz, you can also share. Um, ako, ano lang, fulfilling experience naman for me. Um, mm-hmm. I started out with a patient, um, intubated siya, non-responsive. So um, she was actually just discharged last Saturday. 
Um, she's fully recovered. She was intubated and then we, I, I only started um, passive range and bed moms with her, but you see her motivation to get better. And I feel like motivation really plays a big part when it comes to a, pa a, a patient's um, recovery. So she was really motivated to go back home to, to see her family because she was uh, she initially contracted um, pneumonia and then it became COVID and all that. So um, yeah, um, yun lang, yung fulfillment na you make a difference sa, sa buhay ng isang tao. And um, we were both crying when, we, when she got discharged because Aww. she's been through a lot. And she was thanking me for consistently seeing her for therapy because I was the only connection to the outside world para sa kanya kasi hindi siya. She was isolated. She was in ICU for a couple months. So that, that for me was really um, unforgettable. And Luis? Uh, for me, it's um, life-changing. Because as a children's therapist, I don't want to be able to redeploy in ITU. <laughs> Especially when we don't know in the adult practice, to tell you honestly. And we had to have like a we we have to have a crash course on how to go again. But I think the most uh, unforgettable experience was um, isang pasyente. Um, he was um, in the ITU for like 30 days, and then mm -hmm. um, if our, if my memory serves me right, um, we were doing prone and deprone and we're making sure that we skin contractures, we skin adhesions, and muscle tightness to to make sure the positioning would be there and would be optimal. And then um, suddenly. So we were thinking it's either a discharge or an expire. It's either which one naman yan eh, kung mawala sa IT ward. And then the nurse told me, isa pinoy na nurse din, na oh, na discharge na siya kasi um uh, umokay na yung 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 um vital questions and everything else. And then um when we went down doon sa para amber zone, um my iPad na hinahawakan yung nurse and then he was talking to his family. And that was literally life-changing kasi we, we've, 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 we've witnessed kung paano siya nag-evolve from a bedridden patient to a patient who can now talk to his family. So that alone is really life-changing, especially as a children's OT Now we have never expected we would be able to make a change not only in the life of the patient but also in the life of his family. Yeah. Oh, interesting to know, no? Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Katawa. Katawa. And with that, um, before we end, you know, we're finally nearing the end of our Talakayan season, uh, season two, episode three. Yeah. Do you have any final takeaways for all the Filipino OTs? You know, let's start with Miss Jan. Um, final thing. Yes. Kingston <laughs> Hospital is Kingston Hospital is hiring occupational therapists. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are in desperate need of occupational therapists. <laughs> Yun yung nanawagan yung nag advertise ad nasa, nasa NHS yeah. jobs yung advert yeah. namin. So please do yeah. apply. Um, kasi. <laughs> They make an opportunity. Well, well, um, kid, kidding aside, um, I would say being an occupational therapist in the UK is really a um, fulfilling career. Um, not just not just career, but um, fulfilling as a person. Dun sa dun sa, kasi it's not it's not just the job. It's more of how you how you changed how you have how you affected others na natulungan mo sila and as what louis said it's not just the patient it's also their family it's their you've set them you've given you kumbaga ikaw yung as an ot you are one of the ways kung paano nila mareregain yung life nila na at some point inagaw sa kanila nung pandemic. Yeah. So, occupational therapist, we are doing a great job. So, sa pagiging holistic in everything. It's a complex role. Ika nga, hindi lang siya simple 
anatomy, physiology, exercise, everything. No, it's not. It has everything around a person and everything that is important for the person. Yun yung mm -hmm. goal natin. So, keep high on the greens. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank right. you thank you thank you Jan Rigel. um ako naman well here in the US of course we need occupational therapists as well we need um, <laughs> we're very short staff the manpower is real um but yeah um I feel like we play a very important role in getting these patients get to where they used to be or have them like the quality of life that they deserve even after all this um, pandemic. And um, we always, us as occupational therapists, we see them as um, holistic beings and we always consider what matters to them and not, not, not the opposite, not what's the matter with them. So it's very important that we consider their well-being all the time. And um, we always hope for the best na makarecover sila after all this pandemic. Yeah. And, and last, Luis? Oh, um, same then. Um, we're also hiring as well in pediatrics. We're <laughs> 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 hiring adults. Hiring din ang pediatrics. Yeah, we're, we're, we're short staff. Anyway, um, I think we're, as an OT, um, we're trained to be critical thinkers. We're trained to be resourceful and creative. We're trained not only to think inside of the box, but also outside of the box. So mm -hmm. it's more of connecting the individual or the patient and how he or she would be able to regain back his or her, 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 her consciousness and also on how that person would be able to, you know, um, engage in his or her everyday occupations. So with those simple steps, baby steps, you know, from the ITU, from the inpatient, from the um, rehab facility until the patient gets discharged, until the patient arrives in oh, his sure. or her home. I think once once we complete the process, that's how we would be able to fulfill ourselves, our role as an OT. And that's it. Nice. Nice. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Carol, I have a question. Hiring from the hospital in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we are also encouraging all the OTs here in the Philippines, you know, to also to serve in the in the Philippines in the country for the Filipino people. Ayan. Pero ang ganda ng mga sinabi ni Jan, ni Luis, saka ni Rigel, no? in terms of their takeaway. Yung kumbaga, ma-appreciate mo yung um, pagiging holistic talaga ng role natin as an OT, no? Right? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, with that, I think we can end this conversation. We've heard so much and we've learned so much from John from what to do. They just uh, they do they adjusted immediately and became flexible. Amazing, right? So um, I also want to salute um, our speakers now because uh, you know the situation is different. Um, but we're all fighting the same battle, right? So yes. I want to, yes, uh, yes I, I just want to say salute to all of you. Um, keep up the good work and tap it lang tayo, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, and sempre hiring din nga sa Pilipinas. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kailangan ma I, I think, <laughs> Yeah, I think, ano, I think asking for it. Pero kung sakaling dadating yung second wave, we we know better. Right. Yeah. yeah. We know better. That's right. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's a good takeaway. We only learn uh, from whatever situation we are in right now. And things can only get better. That's what I believe also. So, yes. what a night. <laughs> Not yeah. Tanya. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No? Also, uh, an OT also working in a hospital. So, ang dami ko po natutunan. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagpapaunlock sa aming invitasyon. Ayan. I know magkaiba man ang time zone. Marami kayong ginagawa. This, actually, a Sunday could be used as your 
break time, di ba? Or your rest day, but you chose to spend it with us, uh, together with all the Filipino OTs watching this right now. Because again, again, uh, knowing that this topic is very important to me and to everyone actually, because ano ba talaga ang rule ng OT in, in COVID patients, right? So again, mm-hmm. malamig malamig salamat po. And sa pagpapaunlak sa aming imbitasyon. At sana uh, patuloy pa rin namin makalala ang iba pang mga OTs na nagtatrabaho sa ibang, iba't ibang lupalop ng mundo at nagbalik bayan <laughs> or basically maging guest lang din namin dito sa aming mga utala kayan. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.